Well, hi, everybody. I'm Andy Greenberg, and with me is... I'm Carol Greenberg. Nice to see you today. Nice to see you, Carol, and nice to see everybody. And today, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to do something that might even bring you back to your preschool days and your nursery school days. Now, that doesn't that excite you? Well, it excites me, and let's find out why. Do you remember back in preschool? As a matter of fact, you were a preschool teacher. I certainly was. From how many years? Oh, for a long time. And did you teach them about colors? Yeah. About yeah. Well, what did you talk about when you when you taught the kids about colors? What did you teach them? We talked about the colors that are, they're attracted to. We talked about the value of colors, meaning from light to dark. Okay. We talked about how colors interest you and why you there are certain times that it's your favorite color. And uh, by the way, you guys, and you when, and oh, when yes. they play games, and yes. there will always be little markers with games, and we would say, "I want this. I want." I want blue, it's my favorite color. And that was difficult because there were only four pieces. Oh, red, yellow, blue, and green. No, I like that color because it happens. What's your second favorite color? Okay, so people in those days did have their favorite color. As they do now. Now, let me ask you this question. Did yes. people change their favorite color? Sometimes they do, later on in life. Why? Or because they, they maybe it doesn't it's the color that they used to wear and the color no longer looks good to them maybe they've changed their hair color and or maybe with uh a tanning their skin has gotten a different shade and later on the color doesn't appeal to them anymore or do you think it's possible watch this that their personalities might have changed that's very true and their interests might have changed, yes. so therefore their color is related to whatever is going on at the time. Yes, and I want you to take a look at Carol's glasses. Aren't they colorful? Yes, they are. So therefore, I'm going to ask you a question, and I'm going to say, hold on, you have to stay close to the mentor. What is your favorite color? My favorite color is blue with the blue family. No, 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 no. I don't want blue with the blue family. Just give me color. Okay, then it's turquoise. Turquoise? What happened to purple? It's turquoise. Well, turquoise is my second favorite color now. <laughs> yeah. I, I am not prepared for this. I yeah. had this whole thing set up, the purple, well, and we didn't rehearse this. Yeah, I, thought, I, thought if, I thought after 50 years, I knew her. This is okay. a switch. Uh, oh my gosh. What do you mean? Still what you one of my favorite colors, but I'm still drawn to the blues. And I'm sorry to say the blue family. The blue family. Which is turquoise is a part of. So, all right, so any gift that I might have on order for you with purple, I got to call no, up and I would change. No, I would love it. No, it's apparently not. I would love it. All right, so let me ask you a question. Describe your personality. My personality is, is my personality is bubbly. My personality is multitasking. My personality is I like things that are interesting. I get bored easily. I like oh, oh, oh. that worries me. No, don't worry. I'm, I'm with I'm you for 50 you. years. Okay. I'm keeping you. I haven't bored you yet? No. Okay. Not right. a bored. Okay. My personality don't, don't. is I have a lot of different interests because I like to learn different things. And that's my personality. Uh, give me a couple more personality traits. I'm organized. Uh -huh. I'm organized. Okay. I'm um, adventurous. Okay. Much. All right. I don't know what else you want to know. All right. Let's start with these. All right. According to science, anybody who likes the color blue has these personality traits. And we're going to talk about you in a minute. So just hang in there. Number one, not necessarily in order, but alphabetical order. Calm. Are you a calm individual? Most of the time, yes. When are you not calm? When there's a terrible <laughs> emergency like okay. everyone else. I got you. Are you competent? I'm very competent. Are you cool? I'm very cool. Uh huh. Are you efficient? I'm very efficient. Right, here comes a, tr a trick question here, and be careful how she answers. Are you intelligent? Yes, I'm very intelligent. <laughs> it doesn't say very intelligent. I'm sorry, I'm throwing that in. Are you logical? I'm logical. Are you, do you have reflection? Yeah, I have reflection. Are you relaxed? I'm relaxed. Are you reliable? I'm very reliable. Do you believe in security? I believe in security. You believe in serenity? I believe in serenity. Are you soothing? I'm soothing. Are you successful? I'm very successful. Just a couple more. These are alphabetical. Are you tender? I can be. I'm not going to say 100%. Yeah, I'm tender. Oh, wow. That's a different one. So define tender. Tender is... Um, define I, tender. I'm trying to define tender. Uh -huh. It could be... Um, 
I don't know. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I most of the time. I think so. Okay. I think when you were taking well, care I'll of your mom. That. I'll okay. take. Oh yes. Then I. Then I. Yes. Yeah, I'm doing. Are that. you tranquil? I am tranquil. Are you trustworthy? I'm very trustworthy. Well, there it is. Yeah, see, the color that is your favorite color describes your personality. But she also had a second color. I'm not going to do this with everybody, but you also had a second color. Yes, the second color was purple. Purple, yes. It's like this. The blue is your Okay. So it's really hard. What do you have on your fingernails? I have act four that's chipping off right now. Yeah, most of it went away. But watch this. With purple being your second favorite color, yes. and I'm going to go with you too. So just bear with me. I'm interested uh, to hear this. Are you authentic? I'm very authentic. Are you charming? I like to think so. Are you dignified? I'm dignified. Are you exclusive? Define exclusive. <laughs> Define exclusive. Well, we're 50 years married. You're oh, exclusive. Oh, then we're exclusive. <laughs> okay, I'm That's not. That's my gonna, definition. I'm, I'm not. Gonna, I don't understand what you were going uh, for. Do you like luxury? I love luxury. <laughs> Who doesn't love luxury? Oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> Are you uh, regal? Regal? Yeah. Okay. Th this is a family program now coming up. Are you sensual? I am sensual. <laughs> okay. You know what? She is sophisticated. Um, at times. Spiritual? Yes. Stately? I don't know. Eh, I'm not, I'm not I'm sure. Not, okay. That's I'm a secondary not. color. See, there was one that... And I don't, the next one, I don't really think it, it describes you. Upper class. Upper class? No. No, no, I think she's a common folks. I've never seen her be snobby. However, of all these personality traits, it is true, except for one or two. Now, do you remember what my favorite color is? Your favorite color is blue. It is blue. It so is blue. we're a match. We're a match. Look, look what I'm wearing. I'm wearing blue, and I'm not going to go over all the highlights of blue, but here's what I am going to do with you. So I'm going to share the screen for a moment, and I am going to ask you to take a look at these colors, and what do we have? We have black, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, pink, and brown. So I'm going to ask you to pick out your favorite color. Now, I know you can't answer me. I understand that. But please keep this in the back of your mind. Which is your favorite color? You now have an answer? Do you think they have an answer? I think they have an answer. All right. Well, while they're thinking of the answer, there is a story I am compelled to tell. A great story. So here's my story. And you, you're familiar with this. Talk about colors. Talk about preschool and kindergarten. So I was not in her class when she was teaching uh, preschool. You be very young for me. <laughs> but, but, okay. but you're still teaching, uh, pardon me, but all of us were in the class once before. So as was I. And I remember one time I was driving with my dad, and I think I was uh, between preschool and kindergarten. And my dad stopped at a traffic light. I was young, obviously. I was sitting in, I think I was actually in the front seat in those days, which was, would be against the law today. And I said to my dad, what's that hanging? And my dad said, that's a traffic signal. Uh-huh. And then I said, oh, okay, what does that mean? And my dad found this to be a very educational moment for me. This is going to be a teachable moment. You know those moments when you're proud to be a parent and you're about to teach something? Question. Teachable moment. Teachable moment. Great. He said, look, Andy, on the top is red. And red means stop. You got to stop. Okay. He said, in the bottom light is green. And green means go. go. He said, the middle light is caution, which means it's changing from the green to the red. And they're giving you a caution. Okay, I got it. And in those days, I was pretty smart. I revered my father, as we all do, and I was a very educated man, not really, but very successful, I should say. He never finished high school, but he was very successful. And the reason he didn't finish high school, I need to say, because of, as many of uh, you did and people you know, you escaped from Germany and you didn't have the time to do so. So anyway, with that being said, here comes young Andy. Yes, young Andy is in class. And I, look, let's, let's play this out. So let's say you had a student like me, right? This has really happened. And you're teaching the colors. And you point to the color red and somebody says, hey, this is the color red. 
you point to the color green, you look for a volunteer, someone says, this is the color green. Now, when you point to the yellow, I knew the yellow, I was so proud. I raised my hand, which I normally didn't do. I was not participative in class, hard to believe. So the preschool got kindergarten teacher calls on me. He said, Andy, you have an answer? I said, yes, I do. And I was so proud, I stood up, I was all ready to go. And I said, I know that color. She said, what is it? I said, it's caution. And what would you do if you were I'd the teacher and somebody- I'd be very puzzled. I would be like, what? Yeah, and that's what the teacher did. I remember, I remember this so vividly like it happened yesterday. And the teacher said, yep. Yeah. What do you mean? It's caution. I said, yeah, that's caution. That's the color caution. How would you have reacted then? How did, who told you that? Yes, and that's- Who told you that? I told him the story about my father. My father said the middle of the light is caution. And of course it was yellow because I took him literally. And up to that point, anytime I saw that color, I thought it was yellow. I really- Caution. Did. Caution. Right. Yeah, I thought, yeah, thank you. I thought it was caution. So how many times the rest of the year do you think I raised my hand? Nope. And how many years of my educational career do you think that whole episode stopped me from raising my hand? Wow. Wow. Just but that, that was today. just, that was it. I know, I was sensitive. What can I tell you? Am I sensitive today? Yeah. All right, so here we go. Anybody that, that picked the color red, anybody pick the color red? Let me go back to sharing it because I wanted to give you a chance to absorb and I wanted to tell you the story. Here we go. The color red, here we go. It stands for anxiety, arousing. Ah, what color is your lipstick, Carol? It's pink. pink. Oh. <laughs> no. But wait, did you know that men and women see red very differently? No, I didn't know that. Explain that. So, what do you mean? No, 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 no. They do. So Tell me that. Go ahead. Maybe women see red as being in, in uh being in power and men see red as a sensual color women's oh yeah you know right she's right because a lot of women when they want to show power they wear red, red. Ah, I didn't think of that. okay here we go thank you so let's stay tuned here boom and let me go back so arousing daring dominant energy excitement health life love passion power protection spirited stimulating strength and up to date so if red was your color that's who you are orange well oh, those are some of you attributes yes orange and personality orange is abundant arousing a lot of sexual in innu innuendos here comfort daring excitement extroversion fun happiness lively security sensuality spirit and warmth you know, do you know anybody whose favorite color is orange some people that like black and orange. Yeah, as okay. a combination. Yeah. All right. Very good. Following colors. Now, yellow, which is the uh, And then after you go through yellow, I want to tell you something interesting. Well, but go ahead. Okay. No, go, no, go through. I want you right. to go through yellow. Okay. First. I'll do what the boss says. Yellow. Okay. Yellow. Here, no, uh, by the way, it's caution. So please remember, yellow is caution. Arousing, cheerful, confident, creative, excitement, extroversion, friendliness happiness, optimism, self-esteem, what? Sincerity, smiley, and spirited. Let's pause as Carol tells me another story. Okay, when it comes to painting uh, colors of a house, that, or even buying um, plates and, and um, utensils, yes. they do not recommend orange and yellow in the kitchen because orange and yellow are appetite stimulants. And if you're watching your weight, you don't want to be in a room where it's encouraging you to eat more. What, what color is it? Orange and yellow. So ask yourself this question. Have you ever gone, this is a good point. Have you ever gone to a restaurant and it's been painted in orange or yellow? Then you know. It's then you know. The exactly yellow. right. You also, blue. Yeah. If you go to a Mexican restaurant, you will see that a lot of their plates are like, what they call fiesta wear, which comes in orange and yellow and red. Yeah. And that's the place that they serve you on. And they're encouraging you to eat more. I bet you didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, now you, you wow, there you go. Now you know. Okay, here we go. Green. Uh, by the way, Greenberg, no relationship. Calm, comfort, equilibrium, harmony, health, hope, nature, outdoorsy, peace, 
prosperity. Why prosperity for green? Because of the money. There you go. Relaxation, security, serenity, soothing, and tender. By the way, did you know that we had so many different personality traits? But I'm going to show you something a little bit later, as Carol will, how these colors impact your life. I'm just going to talk about the colors. We're going to watch this. Let's go to purple. We did purple. Pink. But Anybody? you know what? Yes. Purple is the second, the second universal co favorite color. The universal favorite color is blue. And the second one is purple. Really? Really. All right, let's take a poll. Okay. I'm sorry. Take a poll. How many of you out there? I know you can't raise your hand. How many out there is your favorite color purple? One, two, three, <laughs> four. I don't see where it's second. Well, that's the statistics that say that. So. All right, here we go. Charming. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. let's what? do this. Pink. Let's go to pink. Yeah, let's go. Uh, and let me show the picture again. So hold on just a moment here. Here is the picture. Here we go. Pink. 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 Charming. Cheerful. Feminine. Mm, gentle. Nurturing. Sincerity. Soft. Sophistication. Tranquility and warmth. But I'm going to throw one in. And you might have heard this story before. Savings. Please tell them I know the story. So why don't share it with them? I think they'd be very interested. I think we did that one within the, within the power of buying. Why pink? Because what were your piggy banks? They were pink. And I think I told you the story, but maybe not everybody was there, that there was a bank, a savings bank, that wanted to bring more people in. So what did they do? They went ahead and got people and got repainted the inside pink of the bank. And then what occurred? You betcha. People came in and they put their savings in that bank because it subliminally reminded them of what? Their piggy bank. All right, last one, brown. Nature, outdoorsy, reliability, ruggedness, security, support, and tough. And if you wanna look that way, that's your favorite color. So these were some of the wonderful things about colors that affect your life. And so here's my suggestion. But you know what? We choose color based on our mood. I mean, even though we have a favorite color, when we get up in the morning and we say, okay, or at least for female, what am I going to wear today? It depends on your mood. And then yes. you go to your closet mm -hmm. and most of the clothes that you own are in conjunction with your favorite color. Although you have a few that you pick and choose and you say, oh, I'm going to wear this today because this is the mood I'm in. Yes. So I have an idea for everybody. Listen, you might want to tell your grandkids who are over the age of 18 or your um, great grandkids who are over the age of 18, or if you know someone who's looking for company, okay? You know, you always say the following, and that is, what's your sign? Who are you? What do you look like? You know what my recommendation is? Hey, what's your favorite color? Yeah. Hi, my name's Andy, and you are? Helen, what's your favorite color? <laughs> you go. The moment they tell you their favorite color, if you keep this in your mind, then you know the type of person that you'll be trying to establish a relationship with. Now, you can also say, so for example, if somebody says brown and you don't like the rugged type, you don't like nature, you know what I would suggest? What? Moving on. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you're not interested in someone that's, if you're interested in someone that's sensual, and again, over 18, please, if you're interested in somebody that's sensual, if they tell you their color and that color matches sensuality, by all means, go ahead and continue that conversation if that's what interests you. If you're looking for someone who's cheerful and they say the color yellow, you know you've got them. And that's what the purpose of this color psychology. But at this point, you might be saying to yourself, you know what, Andy, I think this time you got off your rocker. But I want to show you something which is very interesting that you probably have never seen before. And here we go. I'm going to give you a chance to look at it. That's the wrong one. I'm going to stop sharing. And Well, actually, I'm going to go uh, stop sharing while I talk, see, make sure I can find what I'm looking for, because I had it up on the screen a moment ago, and I hate when I do this because I did have it up. Please, Carol, tell them, tell them about art while I'm trying to do oh, something. Oh, don't take this one away. I do. Art has been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. I'm always interested in any aspect of art. And 
because color is a an important part of art. It plays a very important role. So when you go to a museum and you look at painting, some you might go over to the painting that is attracting you because of the color. Okay, so you're an artist, right? So give us some background bef about art and artists and colors, uh, and because everybody likes art, right? Look behind me, I got art. We got art all over our houses. You go to the, when COVID is over, you go to the art museum, and there's a particular style of art that actually impacts your life. But when she's done, I'm going to tell you about that. So go ahead. Well, let's talk about some orders like Picasso. Everybody told about Pablo Picasso. Let's talk about Henry Matisse. Everybody's heard about him. Let's talk about Van Gogh, very popular. And if you think about all these, these were very colorful patients painting and pictures that stirred up your emotions. It wasn't only the style they did it in, it was the color that attracted you to it. Now, Picasso was a very, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't um, know. Abstract artist. So his pictures weren't necessarily real, but they attract, you knew what they were, he was painting. And interestingly enough, Picasso went through some color moods like he had a red mood where he painted everything red and he had a blue period where he painted everything blue so he for some reason that's what he did at that time and the same thing with henry matisse well, he, i'm going to pause okay. for a moment because it's something i don't know okay. what would attract people to an abstract piece of work people who don't like realistic things oh or they okay. want to use their imagination a little bit more to to try to see what the artist was trying to convey. So would you say that a person who likes abstract is tends to be creative? A, a or, little bit. And, and not, out of the box Not thinker? necessarily, but yes, I, I would go along with that. But and I that, wouldn't actually say that a person who likes realism is not an intelligent no, and right. I'm not going there. Right, but yes, it, it's just like, oh, because you can find a different meaning in every painting that you see. Oh, he was trying to convey that. Oh, look, can you see a, a picture of a human there? Oh, you can see this, so. So, so I'm gonna try something that I don't okay. think anybody's ever thought of before. And of course, this is all uh, rehearsed. So what, let me answer this question. If you are interviewing somebody for a creative job, okay? and you show them two paintings. This is, I've never thought of this before. Okay. You showed them a Picasso right. and you showed them a Henry Matisse, right? Right. Matisse being a realist, I guess is the um, expression. Somewhat. Okay. But somewhat, mm -hmm. I mean, you could do somewhat. Okay. I mean, let's just take Norman Rockwell. Norman Rockwell. Rockwell, okay. who okay. was a realist who, okay. based, who based his paintings on life cycle. And if you would give, it's almost like a Rorschach ink, ink test. And if you would put those two paintings in front of them and you're looking for someone who's creative, would you want that person to say that they like Picasso better? Not necessarily, mm -hmm. because they could find something in Norman Rockwell's painting that maybe someone else didn't see, but it's more, I mean, if I, okay, so I'm, I'm gonna give you that point. Yeah. Because if they come out with something that says, I see this and that, that means they're willing to, jump out of that box and expand it. So I'm gonna put you on the spot. Put me on the spot. You walk into a room. Yes. Two paintings, just yes. two. And yes. I'm, I'm gonna ask you the same question. Okay. Just two. You've got a Norman Rockwell yes. and you got a Picasso. Yes. Which one are you gonna to go I'm to going first? I'm going to the Picasso. Yes, and you know why? Because she's a creative person. I'm going to the Picasso. Yes. You see, that was some words I didn't even think about. Going I'm going to the Picasso. Right? Right. Okay. So if you're abstract and you like abstract art, that means you're a creative person. By the way, there's nothing wrong with people who are not creative. I'm certainly not gonna go there. There's nothing wrong with being a realist. As a matter of fact, some people would say, go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna go a little further. When, when people who, pe pa painters who have done abstract art have been more experimental in their work. You take someone like Jackson Pollock. He was experimental because he took the things and he splattered and everything. He created works of art. And I know sometimes you go to a museum and you stand there and you say, oh, I could, I could have done that. Well, the point is he had, a, he had a technique and he chose certain colors. He chose certain colors purposely. But he experimented. It was the first time that that had been done, where he did huge canvases. You have just answered a question about me. What is that? That you've always wondered about, and now I figured it out. You know, because I, I, I love me. it so much. I have to admit, I don't necessarily like going to art museums. And she can tell you that. But I go, why? Because she loves it, and she does things I like. I do things she likes. 
But what's the point? What's she, the point? I'm going to say she gets upset that when I go to an art museum and I just go into a room, I just scan the room. You know, I'm a scanner. I just scan the room. And then if I don't see anything I like, I sit down, I look at my phone, and I, I don't pay attention. And she, she looks, not only she look at the painting, she looks at every, listen to me, every written description, every word. Then she calls me over. Hey, look at this. I got to show this to you. Yes, Carol. <laughs> But hey, what's the point? And I just, well, what's the point? What is the point? The point is, I just realized something. When I see something abstract, don't I call you over and say, boy, that's nice? Yes, you do. On, yeah, you yeah. do. Most of you don't like the realism. No, right? I prefer, prefer the creativeness, the, abstract, right. the abstract and creativeness. Right. And guess what I did in, in my, for a profession? I was a marketing guy. <laughs> I designed and developed marketing campaigns, so we had to come up with ideas. advertisements, and the whole nine. You see how this thing works? Art. Please go on about the arts and colors. Okay, so then you have somebody like, you have somebody like Ed Hardman. And if you don't know who he is, he's the guy that did the screen. And all his paintings, go ahead, I just thought and all his paintings are very dark. The color, they're not bright colored. The colors are very dark because unfortunately he had a lot of hardships in his life. So he painted from what he knew. He painted from what he knew. So, and, but the scream is a very interesting painting because the, you, there are so many ways to interpret that painting. Why is this person there with his hand out? What is he screaming about? What is, what is going on here? So there's lots of lots of different ways to interpret that painting. And I happen to love his painting, which is an oxymoron for me, meaning I gravitate to the bright and uh, favorable colors. So Andy trying to pull up the screen so you can see what I'm talking about, which I hope he can do because it's an amazing painting that I actually did. And um it, you, and when well, you taught people how to do it, I did. I actually taught a class on it. And when I asked the children what this person was screaming about, they they had all kinds of answers. So if you can see this painting, <laughs> uh, it's amazing. I mean, look at it. Yes, and um, this particular painting is showing a little bit more vivid colors. You see that the water behind him with the blues and the orange, the orange and the green. Is it is it uh, is the water turbulent? Is that why it's swirling? He's sitting by the fence. His face is sort of ghostly. Why is he screaming? But somewhere there is, and on this particular painting you can't tell, but somewhere on the real painting there's two very small figures but it's a very interesting painting and it was a great painting for kids because it taught them about perspective which means how to line up your your um your uh your bridge correctly it taught them about this world it taught them about, about the color it made for an interesting story so there's two interesting stories here kind of oh yes i like that story <laughs> sure. but first before we tell that story you know what that reminds me of what oh home alone yes Yes. Yes. That's where I bet you. If you go back to it, that's where Macaulay Culkin got that famous cause. Oh my God! But here's the story. So one day, Carol and I had an opportunity. That's the painting, right? Yeah. Carol and I had the opportunity to actually see the painting live. Right. To go because we went to Norway. We went to Norway to the Edward Munch Museum. Yes. And if you remember, every painting was dark and yes. foreboding. And did I like that museum? You did. Yeah, because, you, you, yeah. because it was interesting. You're like, why did he paint this? It, was, right. it wasn't a one of the mill. It was interesting. Right. So what happened afterwards? Well, the painting was stolen. We didn't and, do it. And the very interesting thing is that the time I was working for the ACC uh, as an administrator you and as an art center preschool. As, right? And as an art uh, an art uh, director. Uh, I came back and it was stolen. My co-workers actually accused me of taking the painting. Yes, sir. But we didn't do it. But we didn't do it. All right. I, I, I believe it was returned afterwards. I'm pretty sure it was. All right. Well, uh, who else are you going to be talking about? Who else am I going to yes. be talking about? Well, I can talk about Van Gogh. Van Gogh had a lot of different colors and Van Gogh's style was in many, many different colors. Let's see if we can do, if we can find Starry Night on Van Gogh. Oh boy, keep on talking. Starry Night was a great painting because it incorporated a lot of different colors with the blues and the greens and all that in the swirl. And you know what? If you look at TV, we don't like hurricanes, but when there's a hurricane coming and they start posting things up on the weather, 
you and they show you the chart you can actually see that some of these images actually reflect some of the things in Dory Night painting. So it, it, it's, a, it's a combination, but he had a lot of different, uh, a lot of different techniques that he used. Uh, Andy's still trying to pick up the painting and we'll see if he can do that. And that's a great, that's a great thing. And I want to ask you about something once you see it. So, if you can see the painting. Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. here we go. Okay, let's see if we can see the painting. Okay, so you see those swirls and, and you see the moon and the sun, you see the swirls behind you. Now take a look at that green thing. That was always a topic of interest to my children when we did that. You gotta show me the green this thing. This green thing right here. Okay, this, this oh, green this. thing, okay. yes, yep. pull it down here. So Andy, what is this green thing? Fire? You think it's fire, but it's fire green? No. So pull it down a little bit. Look at it closely. It. What is it? It still looks like uh, it's some kind of tree. It could be. It could be a cypress bush. It could be some um, some uh, wind stuff. But that was always a huge conversation piece for my kids. They could not figure out what that was. And we'd have to go back. But as I said, take a look at all the swirls. And next time the weather channel comes up, and God forbid, we don't want a hurricane, but they start showing you all this swirling. Take a look and see how identical they can be. It's very interesting. So let me ask you this question. Was he a spiritual and religious person? Um, he was a very tormented person. I really actually... Uh, actually, he was because I think before he painted, he wanted to become a minister, and he oh. failed at that. I'm pretty sure about that. Well, there's my clue. Yeah, there's the church. There's, there's the, my clue. There's the church in the background. It's a village. Yes. yes. And I think he wanted to do that, and he gave up on that. And he was a prolific painter. He painted all that, but he was very, very tormented. Yes. 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 So. Right. There we go. So here's uh, anyone. And I actually believe that he might have painted, I, I could be wrong, he might have painted Starry Night when he was institutionalized. Oh, okay. And was he reaching out to, to God? Because yeah, he could have been. Because of church people? He, he could have been. He yes. could have been, but his, his second passion was trying to become a minister. Now there's another painter that did, that did a fantastic job with colors and her uniqueness. And I think her name was Frida? Her name was Wait a the Mexican artist who happens to be one of my favorite, favorite all-time artists. She, she unfortunately had a very, very tough life. She was in a terrible, terrible accident when she was 16 years old, which forced her and broke every bone in her body, which forced her to lay in bed for months on end. And her father was a photographer, and in order to keep her busy, he gave her some paint. She, she proved to have artistic talent, but she laid in bed on her back. And so they installed a mirror on her ceiling so she could see herself. So she painted images upon images of herself because that's the only thing that she could see. And she was, uh, she was a uh, radical for the, her time period. She was a radical artist. She believed in a radical ideals. She um, was from Mexico, so that's why you see, that's why you uh, might see some monkeys and some different things behind her and some cats. It was very different. Um, if you notice on the bottom, it's, um, there's some ropes and there's some, and she had some, a lot of grotesque images, but she painted from real life and that, and she painted the only thing she knew and her life was full of pain and everything, but she, she was a, she was a wonderful, wonderful painter. I really, really enjoyed her. So, so Carol, why the mix, and I don't know if you know the answer, why the mix between the monkey and the cat? I, I don't know, but she used all, she, because she grew up in Mexico and the animals ran wild. And she was, she loved the animals ran wild and the plants grew wild. And when you think of Mexico, you think of all the colored plant pots and all the colored scenery. But um, she just painted from real life. And uh, she just was a wonderful painter. And if you if you uh, look there, I mean, the uh, thing that uh, she's identified a lot by, and if you bring down the painting, Andy, is her eyebrows. And in those days, you know, today us women go and have our eyebrows waxed and everything, but that's her signature look where she had what they called a unibrow. And she was very proud of it. So what made her so famous? 
She's actually married a famous painter, Diego Rivera. Her politics were, she was different. She was an adventurous, outspoken woman. She was different. So let me explain something to you about Carol. Carol loves a TV show, which I think is out of this world too, called The Twilight Zone. And so I say that because Carol is an, also an abstract thinker. Uh, I want to see if that goes back to uh, some of your uh, personality traits. Reflection. Okay, fine. Reflection. But I have to ask you this question. Why, did, why does that painting, with all its weirdness, attract you? Would that, I mean, why is she your favorite artist? I didn't finish the question. Over Van Gogh? over Matisse and over some of the others. What is it about her weirdness that attracts you? I, I love different things. It's it because she's reaching into her soul. Not only, okay, it's realistic, but it's abstract in a way because the thing she's painting with, with a uh, collar with nails and everything doesn't happen with blood dripping down. So it's part realism, it's part abstract, and it's part far-fetched, like the Twilight Zone. And it's part from her personal experience. Her colors are wonderful. Everything about the painting is wonderful. Like I just, I and I don't. I actually got hooked on it. I was never hooked on it till I taught a class on it in in my sixth grade class. And from the, and that's a long time ago. And then I started looking at her painting, and I just got a real affinity for so it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna grab for something. Here. Okay. Would you consider that painting in, in any way, shape, or form the one you just had on? Yeah. Spiritual, regal, or upper class? Spiritual. Yeah. Which, by the way, was one of her pink personality traits. So, I got to ask you, okay, and hopefully uh, everyone else can, can chime in. Uh, what is spiritual about this picture? I know. I mean, I, I have a guess. What is spiritual about this picture? I don't know. I look at it. I look at the butterflies, the peacefulness of about it. Okay. Behind her. Okay. And I look at the monkey. The monkey huh. looks like he's playing. Okay. So here's what I see. Okay. Doesn't mean I'm right. I don't know if you see the same thing. Watch this. Here's what I see. I see right here. Yeah. If you take a look at any picture or drawing of Jesus on the cross, yeah. and I recognize that I'm delving into another religion, you will most likely see blood dripping from the neck. If you take a look at the cat and the monkey and the butterflies, okay, and the greenery, to me, this is going to sound weird. Like a crown, a thorn of crown. Uh, a thorn of crown, I'll, I'll, I'll get into that. But I also have a sense that it reflects creation. And that's what she is reflecting upon. Because one of the things that... Look, and he doesn't even like to go to art museums. I'm taking him with me well, next time. Yeah, right. <laughs> So... <laughs> So that, that is something that, that really at least uh, strikes me as potentially being, and, and she looks serene. She looks serene and happy in her surroundings. Well, in, in, in her painting, in most of her painting, she's not smiling. She was a serious, serious person. She's not, she's not smiling in most yeah. of her painting. I don't think we want to get involved in the Mona Lisa right now, but if we did... What, what, would be, what would be your interpretation of the Mona Lisa? The Mona, Mona Lisa, my interpretation of the Mona Lisa, Lisa. Lisa is it's a secrecy. Everyone wondered why she has this half smile, what she's smiling about, who was the Mona Lisa? And um, there's speculation that, uh, who did the Mona Lisa? What's the matter with me? Leonardo da Vinci. Vinci was part of a um, secret society. And uh, that's, it's very intriguing. We did have the good fortune of seeing the Mona Lisa in person. And in a way, we, were, we weren't prepared for the actual size of it, which was extremely small, but uh, obviously a very famous painting. Um, and, you know, from the Mona Lisa comes the Mona Lisa smile and everybody taking a, a different perspective on the Mona Lisa. Um, it's not one of my favorite paintings. It's a very intriguing painting. But it's not one of my favorite paintings. Why um, not? It's too it I it's too period dated for me. It's too period dated for me. So I, I don't like it. But if you look at it and you see the dark tone, you have to figure out why she's smiling 
And if you look at her eyes, they're sort of shifting. And you know, not necessarily, it's not one of my favorite paintings. So we can just see what's going well, on. In the well, Mona Lisa. what do you guys think of the Mona Lisa? Because here it is right now. So what do you guys think of the Mona Lisa? I mean, she's got her hands crossed. She, her eyes are sort of like looking sideways. She's got a half smile. Those, that's, she dressed in the period of time. The background is one of nature. Um, not one of my favorite paintings, but it, 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 it's an extremely famous painting and mm -hmm. it, it's open to many questions. What do you so, think, Andy? So a couple of things that when I look at this. Number one, she's not married. Because <laughs> she has no ring on her finger. But no, <coughs> She's single. Okay, number two, number two, I'm just going to be open with you. If I look at her eyes, because she's not single. She's looking around for someone to. Look at her. She looks like she's available and she's looking or for a company. She, or she's looking at the painter. The I painting that she's modeling for the painter. I, I understand that. But the painter is giving her a pose in, in order to pose. But here comes something crazy. Ready for this? Oh, I am. If you open up, you know, how many? I don't know how many of you are invested in stocks. And every once in a while, you get a corporate report, and they have the picture of the chairman of the board and everything. I guarantee you, most chairmen of the boards are sitting with their hands exactly like this, and they're looking like that, and they're giving you that all-knowing smile. Well, that's what it is. Take a look like at that smile. She's that keeping is a secret. Knowing. She's keeping a secret. No. Yes. No. He's all knowing. He's keeping a secret. In the corporate presence. Like when you do this, like I right, I know it, but I'm keeping a secret. There's no secret there. She's, secret. she's saying, just ask me and I'll tell you. Oh. Look at that. Just ask me and I'll tell you. Oh. Okay, that's what it is. Let's move on to an entirely different topic. So where where have we been so far? We analyzed the personality of colors. We took a journey, a kind of an interesting one through paintings, but now for the coup de gras. The coup de grace. You're going to see how you are impacted by advertisements. We talked a little bit about this before, but you are going to see it. So here, here we come. Watch what happens right now. And let me get this up on the board. I guess I am sharing. Okay, here we go. See this? Look at all these logos. Look at that color, yellow. Remember we said it was yeah. clarity and warmth? Yeah. Look at that, Nikon, UPS, National uh, Geographic, some of these brands you might not know, Cat, Sprint, Pennzoil, Subway, Shell, Best Buy, Hertz, Rent-A-Car. You need optimism and clarity and warmth for that. Ferrari, that color surprises me, okay? McDonald's, McDonald's. McDo yeah, okay, I was looking for, thank thumbs you, McDonald's. Sorry, exactly right. right. Well, thumbs up means warmth, clarity, and warmth. And then you go to uh, cheerful and friendly. Yep, Nickelodeon. Yeah, do you want your Hooters uh, uh, server to be cheerful and confident? Yep, look at Amazon, although I think they got rid of the uh, orange. Now, Payless is out of business. You got the Baltimore Orioles, you got Thanzit, you got uh, Harley Davidson. Well, the point I'm trying to make is, look how they use the color. Now, look at excitement. Whoa! Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. You got Kellogg's, Nintendo, Kmart, out of business. You got uh, Texaco, Coca-Cola. Lego. CNN, Netflix, Lego. Virgin, Legos. You know these Target. brands. Target. Target. You probably know these brands more than you know anything else. Then, of course, you get creative. Remember we talked about blue? That's no, great. creative with the purple. Oh, yeah, that's purple. So sorry. Sci-fi. Don't know my colors, do I? Yeah. Brig Brothers, Barbie, yes. Yeah. Barbie, okay. Welch's, Hallmark Cards, Taco, Taco, Bell. Taco Bell. You betcha. And Cadbury. And Cadbury, you hadn't the seen camp. that one. There you now go. we go to the blues. Now you go to the blues, dependable. Dell, you want a right. dependable computer. Right. AT&T, oh, Lowe's. IBM. IBM. My mother worked for there IBM. There you go, 25 Walmart. years. Walmart, right. uh, Twitter. Right. Yeah, Twitter, Hewlett Packard, Oreo cookies, right. WordPress, Ford. You see how the colors are being used? Then you got peaceful and, of course, the environment, all green. And you got gray for balance. By the way, why is gray a balanced color? Because you know how they always say this is not a black and white world? Right. It's, it's, a, it's a neutral color. It's a neutral color. It's a mix of black and white. It's a mix of black and white. So you can now, I just want you to imagine for a moment what would happen if Pennzoil was in green. You think that would be as impactful? 
No, no. I don't think so. No. No. What do you think if, uh, let's take another one. Let's take Coca-Cola. No, let's take Target. Uh, let's take Target. Well, should we put uh, Target as peaceful? No. Why? Because right. they want you to run around. Right. They want you to be excited about they shopping. They want you to be excited. They were exactly right. So everything that we talked about so far, everything that we talked about so far impacted the colors. And I bet you didn't know that. And it's a very interesting thing because what you can do, you can change people's moods by repainting the environment that they live in. And they have done this. They have taken people who regrettably have been mentally challenged. Okay, in other words, they might suffer from mental, some mental diseases, schizophrenia, many items like that, or um, emotional rage, and they put them in rooms with different colors. And they discovered that color therapy, which is something we didn't delve on yet, does in fact change personalities. So the next time that you buy a, a package of crayons for your granddaughter, or maybe if you have a package of crayons. Well, you know, boys color too. I'm sorry, one more time? You say, buy it for your granddaughter. Boys color too. Okay. <laughs> okay. I did say that. Yeah. I, I, Freud, that, that guy's fraud, right? That's fraud, Freudian slip. <laughs> Now, you know why I said that? Why did you That's think? very interesting. Because he has in color. Because I don't have color. <laughs> very good. I avoided that as much as I can. Um, I don't know why. Anyway, so take a look at what color they pick up. And that way, you'll be able to determine their personality traits. So what do we learn today? Next time that you want to uh, meet somebody for the very first time, dispense with their political views. Dispense with where they came from. Who cares what their family is like? Who cares what their sign is? Who cares what their sign is? Who cares how much money they have? Number one question is, hi, what's your favorite color? Number two, have four paintings. One by Matisse, one by Van Gogh, one, one by, by Norman Walker, Walker, one by Picasso. One by Picasso. One by I'm afraid I can't maybe more than that. Say, which one is your favorite painting? And then determine what their answer is, and then you can figure out what their personality traits are. And the next time that you design a logo or you see a logo, take a close look at it because they are influencing your buying decision. By the way, do you notice the pictures behind me? They are framed in red. And now watch this, we're gonna end with this. Why are they framed in red? Do you have any idea why? Can you figure that out? Because it's a sensual picture, mm -hmm. women in it, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a spy picture, uh -huh. it's, a, it's a spy picture. Yes, it is a spy picture, yes, and red means daring. But here's the great news. You know who painted that? An Israeli spy. An Israeli spy. I didn't well, yeah. buy those things. I guess we did buy those yeah. things. So this was a, an, a former Mossad agent. I forget the gentleman's name and I apologize. It's probably written there, but I can't remember. Uh, he, he had his own stores too. Anyway, so yes, this is, and I, we picked out red. I didn't even realize it now until I did this whole thing. Well, that was just based, that's the picture you picked out. Yeah. It's the one you wanted. Right, that's about the frame. <coughs> right. The frame that we put around. It's red. Yeah, it's red for, it's because it does oh, represent danger. It, it is arousing, it is excitement. There is love there, there is passion, and there is power. So, Carol and I hope you really enjoyed this uh, black and artistic white. Session. Uh, this black and white artistic session where together we colored the world, and I hope, and I know Carol hopes, that we made your world a lot more colorful. Because remember, it's all about the color. My name is Andy Greenberg, and with me is... Carol Greenberg. And we'll see you the next time. Have a colorful day. Stay healthy, happy, and colorful.